Hey guys, it's me Cynthia. Welcome back to Inspiro. So in this video, I want to show you everything that I have in my wardrobe right now. Um, I think it's so important to be conscious of what you currently own. I think one of the scariest things that you can do as a consumer is not really know everything that you have because then when you go shopping, um, you kind of reach for the same things. And what you end up with is kind of a wardrobe full of very similar pieces. And what I really want to strive for in my wardrobe is a wardrobe where everything kind of has something that it brings to the table. It adds some sort of unique value. You can get a sense of not only your style, but what you should be looking for when you're going thrifting, when you're going shopping, when you're considering adding something to your wardrobe. I think that's what being an intentional and conscious consumer is all about, um, in the early stages at least. Starting from knowing what you have in your wardrobe, you can then build a wardrobe that you will feel inspired by every day and that you'll never get tired of if that makes sense like the age of fast fashion shopping and that type of consumer's mindset is over because you don't get anywhere with it you know you're always just going to be unhappy with your wardrobe and that is everything that we're trying to avoid here and if you've been following along recently you would have seen that i did a major declutter of my closet of my shop clothes and everything and i think what doing that decluttering video made me realize too is like it kind of gave me a refresh on everything that i have in my wardrobe and that has allowed me to really be smart about things that I'm thrifting right now um, and things that I'm going to be showing you soon in haul videos um, and I can say that I am so happy and so satisfied with my wardrobe and even just having this reassurance of knowing what I actually want to be looking for versus being overwhelmed I think helps me make conscious decisions of what I want to be buying. These are all things that I just thrifted but I wanted to put them on the rack for now but I'm going to be swapping out um, all the categories that I'm going to be showing you today. With that, let's get into the video. This was my wardrobe for um, about two fall winter seasons when I was working there. For those of you who don't know, I used to work in wholesale for Eileen Fisher in Canada and what that meant is I needed a pretty nice Eileen Fisher wardrobe for when we were in markets because customers would be coming in for appointments and you um, kind of want to be wearing your brand. I'm so grateful that I have been able to because Eileen Fisher is one of my dream brands. I remember they were one of the only really sustainable fashion brands that came up when I googled sustainable fashion brand five, six, seven years ago. Um, but the price point is definitely high. But from learning Eileen's vision, um, I fell in love with them. And I never knew that I would get the opportunity to work for the brand and learn so much from them. First piece is this cashmere t-shirt. It is a gray t-shirt and then it has really long side slits. This is actually my first Eileen Fisher purchase ever. I bought this from a whole run through when I was in my fourth year of university, um, which was, I'd say, three years ago now? Three or four years ago? I waited for it to go on clearance. It was after the winter holidays, and I have been wearing it ever since. I wore it when I even worked there, um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, that's kind of why I hold this piece so near and dear to my heart, because before I even knew that I had the opportunity to work for them, I bought one of their pieces because I was following them for so long. The next one, this is kind of a seasonless um, cardigan because it is a bit lighter. So this is a mock neck tunic and it is long enough where it covers my bum. It's also great for layering. Next I have this silk top. It's very wrinkly. It has these ties at the sleeves and again it just hits at a really nice place on my hip. And I would actually wear this with silk pants so this is their system piece where um, it's just a kind of high-waisted elastic straight pant and what I would do is have this as my base and that lets me play with all of the sweaters and knits and cardigans and I'll layer them over top and what I'll do is I'll throw on a cardigan like this so this is one of my most treasured pieces you guys have seen this over my Instagram every single year and in my videos <laughs> Um, it is an alpaca cardigan and I absolutely just love this. It's so warm and cozy and so luxe and yummy. This I picked up, co-hosted at a fashion show with them, which I think I have a video on on this channel actually. I'll leave it linked here. Um, and I saw this. We all know that this is one of the most gorgeous cloud-like fabrics at Eileen Fisher. It is called CAU um, and it's a type of cashmere and I was in the store for that event. I saw this, I treated myself and I bought it. If you could feel this, it feels like you're touching a cloud. 
you know? Like, if you can mix a cloud and, like, cotton candy and a bunny together, that's what this would feel like. This is one of my favorite cardigans. Um, it is a shawl cardigan uh, made of, I think, an alpaca and organic cotton blend. I love this. I wear this all the time in the winter time especially. It is definitely very thick. I wouldn't say that this is in my fall winter wardrobe recently, but it is this longer dress. I actually like to pair it with these silk pants. I had this in my um, Eileen Fisher video where I had like five pieces, 19 outfits or something, and it just looks like you're wearing a longer tunic with pants, um, but I absolutely love the look of it and I use this as a layering piece too. I kind of treat it as more of a top in the fall winter time. These are cropped and they're made in a family owned factory in Barcelona um, and they're an absolutely gorgeous shape because they are slightly cropped and kind of a tapered trouser. The waist is very big on me so it sits lower. I have to get it tailored to fit my waist but I've owned them for about two and a half, three years and I still haven't tailored them. I kind of just wear them and let them sit on my hips which makes them a very like low rise. It's kind of weird but I don't usually wear something cropped where you can see like this area so I think it's okay. I definitely should bring them to the tailor but they're beautiful and they're one of my warmer kind of pieces of pant. I also have this pair of Eileen Fisher trousers. These are a bit more casual. They're a relaxed jogger, and I think they're tensile. And then the last two things are jackets. So this is a felted, I think a brushed felted wool coat. This is a bit on the lighter side where I'll wear this in that fall winter transitional period before it gets super cold. And I love, again, just throwing this over some cute basics because of the texture and the material. It's so beautiful. This last piece is this jacket. This is one of my favorite jackets. It is a bit more of an oversized suede jacket. It's brown. I love it. I love throwing it over all black or all nude and um, yeah. I also have two scarves from Eileen Fisher. They're both cashmere. One is a dark gray and one is a light beige but they're basically just long scarves that you can wear like this or you can throw over. And then I also have this wool vest which it's really cute and has this plaid pattern. I used to layer with it a lot, but right now I have this love-hate relationship with my arms. I don't really love showing my arms. I haven't really worn this a lot because of that reason. Um, I think it's a bit weird to layer like long sleeves with it, so I don't really reach for it a lot right now. That's the Eileen Fisher portion. And it's the basis for a lot of my winter pieces because a lot of these are the warmer knits that I have. Um, so I'm gonna show you all of my other pieces now. Let me go through what's on the rack first and then I'll go into bottoms after. Something I threw very recently is a silk jumpsuit. I wear this so often. I wear it layered under sweaters so it kind of just looks like pants because it's so comfortable. Or I'll wear it to go out. I'll wear it layered under cardigans. It's just so versatile but I thrifted it which is amazing. This is also a silk piece that I thrifted about um, a few years ago. It is this gorgeous blue shirt and I absolutely love it. I think I got a water stain on it so I need to bring it to the dry cleaners to figure that out but it's something that's so gorgeous and yummy to me. I just love the color against my skin tone and I can't believe I thrifted it. It's just in such good condition for like a thick silk so yeah. I also have this turtleneck dress. It goes to my mid shin and I also wear this with cardigans and sweaters and jackets before it gets super cold in the winter. It's more of like one of my fall pieces. And then I have some thrifted sweaters. The only one that's not a turtleneck is this one. I thrifted this last year and it's so gorgeous. It is hand knitted by someone and it's wool and it's a cardigan. I love wearing this as a top so I'll button it and I'll wear a bralette under it and I think that's so cute. Um, and it's just super special. So I have that. And then I have three thrifted knits. So the first one you see me wearing all the time. And it's my black turtleneck. <laughs> I wear it in all of my videos, honestly. And it is a chenille fabric. So that kind of makes it very grandpa-y, but I love it. I think because it's black, it's a bit more subtle. It's not as shiny. And then I have this one. This is thrifted and it is forest green. It also looks oversized and grandpa-y, but I love that about it. 
Um, I just love like very heavy, thick turtlenecks for the winter. It just gets so cold here. And then I have this one, which is a cashmere turtleneck. So this is so luxe and warm. It's so easy to thrift cashmere. You just have to make sure there's no holes or like moth holes and stuff. So as you can see so far, like I don't have that many tops. Um, I also have a black t-shirt. It's just in my dirty hamper right now, so I didn't want to show you guys, but it is a simple black t-shirt that I thrifted. And then I have my coats. This first one is a cropped fuzzy one, and it's perfect for when it is a bit warmer, so early fall time. And then I have this one, which is also my rain jacket, um, because it has this really big hood on it. This I also thrifted. It is a gorgeous green color. It's so unique. It's a puffer. I wear it over my workout clothes. I wear it whenever it's raining outside. Yeah, wore it to New York last year. It's great. And then that leaves me with my four wool coats. Um, I used to have a lot more, but I trimmed it down to just these ones. So the first one is staple black wool coat. All of them are a bit longer. I love longer wool coats, kind of like duster length, because I think that it elevates them versus having one that kind of cuts mid-thigh. Plus that makes me look shorter, like I think this makes me look elongated. So this one is just black, it's wool, made in the USA, union made. That's why I love thrifting coats. It fits me really well. It's a bit snug, so I can't wear very thick sweaters. And then I found this camel one, which is also gorgeous. This is, I think, made in the same year. It's made in the USA, it's union made, it's wool, it's a gorgeous camel color. It is so big. The shoulders used to go out to here. I tailored these shoulders. It cost me about $65. Very expensive but doable. So this is very oversized on me but I absolutely love it because I get to throw very chunky big knits under it and it fits versus the black one where it's too snug. And just look at the inside. It's like the most gorgeous color. This one I also love. It is a different kind of knit that you don't really see often anymore. It's speckled throughout with like rainbow colors so it makes it very easy to pair with a lot of different colors um, and it's just super unique and I love it. It's so warm. It's so warm. Oh my god. You guys know I've had this for like four years and I just love the color red. It's just such a powerful color. This one is very tailored to me as well like the black one so I can't really layer it with a lot of heavy knits but I like putting like that black cashmere toe neck under it or something lighter um, and I just love it. It's just like such a staple. Those are my coats. I think that coats are so important when you kind of live in a very cold climate like Canada because they're the first thing people see about your outfit and you have to wear them. You can't really show the outfit underneath. Um, and that's why I really like changing it up by having a lot of coats. I don't think I could ever just own one coat because then it'll look like I'm wearing the same thing all the time. I have these two pairs of high-waisted denim that I thrifted. They're both men's denim. Um, I just cut out the labels so that they don't say marks really big on them. One is a dark gray and one is a vintage blue wash. I love both of them so much and I just cut the bottom so they're frayed. They're more of a straight leg but they're the only denim that I have that fit like the high waist really well. But they're a straight leg because they're men's denim so they feel very like casual. They're not tapered in any way which has a very different vibe if that makes sense. This is, as you guys know probably, from Zara. A lot of people have this coat. This was my last fast fashion purchase actually five years ago, six years ago. I've worn it ever since. I wear it often and that's why I haven't gotten rid of it. I think it's an example of when you can go out and buy something from a traditionally fast fashion retailer and still make it work because you wear it so often. I think that there are so many different ways to approach sustainable fashion and I see it as a multiple step process where you can do small things that will have a big impact and the more of those small things you do will make you more of a sustainable consumer if that makes sense. I think that the Zara's and the H&M's of the world make fashion accessible to people who don't have money to buy from places like Eileen Fisher, you know what I mean? Of course, the issue of ethical labor, you when you buy from fast fashion, you know that the workers that are making it aren't being treated well or fair or paid well, you know what I mean? 
I just want to say that I'm not here to tell you not to buy from them because I know that money is the issue at the end of the day. Um, but that's another video. I don't want to ramble about that right now because there are so many things I want to say about it and I don't want you to just take what I say really quickly and make an assumption. Um, I want to explain what I think about it in depth. So if you want to see that in another video, please let me know. There are two other tops. The first one is this black turtleneck, which is a... Um, staple piece that I picked up when American Apparel was still open. It's still made in the USA, so at least I know that the people who made it were treated ethically. And I also have this light gray turtleneck. This is from Joseph, and this is something that I bought four years ago too. really wanted a very light but very warm turtleneck, so this is wool, but it is a very light wool. Um, and so I bought that. I think I bought it from Holt Renfrew. This is the scarf that I've been wearing all the time. It is a houndstooth print. I picked it up at the Christmas market last year. Um, it's from a brand called Franklin. They're a local Toronto brand and it's so big. It's like a blanket scarf. I absolutely love it. The other side is kind of color blo blocked gray. Um, so that, if I don't want the houndstooth, but I always want the houndstooth side. Since I'm talking about accessories, I will also show you the three hats that I own. This one I bought when I bought that Zara jacket. So it's just a black beanie with a big pom-pom. This one is Military Dead Stock. I bought it from La Trey Art and Style in the Junction in Toronto. So it is made in Canada. It is Dead Stock Army surplus. <laughs> but I love it. It's just like an off, like an olive -y color. It's so warm. It's just so cute. And then I have this cream one that I got at a thrift store, but I don't think this is thrifted. I think it's one of those things that they sell on top of their thrifted stuff. I don't think I can ever thrift hats, I'm sorry, like I'm so scared of getting lice. And I just like having a lighter colored beanie with me. These are trousers from Aritzia that I bought a very long time ago in this taupe color. They're really comfortable. I wear them a lot um, just because they are very flowy and very flattering because they're tapered. And these are wide leg pants that if you follow me for a long time, I wear these so often. These are from Express. I also bought this, I think, in second year of university, so a very long time ago. Um, and I just got the legs uh, cut shorter at a tailor so that they hit me right above my like ankle. Um, and they're so flattering because they have an elastic waistband. So you guys know I have the problem of a bigger butt, bigger hips, smaller waist. So these are one of the only pants that actually fit me really well. And that leads me to my jeans. This one, it's from Paige Denim. It was a sample. I bought it at a sample sale. It doesn't fit me right now. <laughs> I used to wear it a lot like two years ago and then my butt got bigger. I gained some weight. I don't think I can button them right now but I have them still because I love them. It is what it is. I still keep them in my closet but they're there. I have this pair. This is a high-waisted skinny and a blue wash. I bought these from Outland Denim um, when I was at the Sustainable Wardrobe pop-up in Sydney when I went to Australia last year. I absolutely love them. I think Outland Denim is an amazing brand because they are doing both like ethical labor and they're also made from organic cotton. They are super stretchy. They also fit pretty well. And uh, yeah, they're just as so skinny, so I love them. I bought this pair from Simply Suzette, who is run by Annie, and she has this huge curated collection of um, sustainable denim brands, which I love. These are from a brand called EB Denim. So she, I think, takes vintage Levi's or vintage denim and kind of like upcycles them into amazing things. So for this pair, she took two different pairs and kind of combine them so that's why the seam is in the middle and they're really cool so these are another pair where i do reach for them and i wear them often but i don't feel my best in them because i know that they just give me a weird shape so i still need to bring them to the tailor to get the waist taken in a little bit so that they do highlight a bit of the curve versus making me look very boxy the last pair of denim and the last pair of pants i have really are these these are Citizens uh, skinnies and they're in a darker wash and they have rips at the knees. I remember I researched about these for so long before I bought them. I think they were the first pair of like expensive denim I ever bought and I was like, oh my god, am I gonna spend like $280 on a pair of denim right now? But denim is just such a thing that I want to invest in because it never fits me and these fit me so well. The last two things that I have are jumpsuits 
This one is a velvet jumpsuit. I wouldn't categorize this in my actual wardrobe. This is something that I wear to holiday parties and Christmas parties and stuff like that. But this is a velvet jumpsuit that I got at American Apparel. Again, I think that was like three years ago, four years ago, because I had a work Christmas party to go to. So I just keep it around to wear to holiday parties because I don't want to buy a dress or anything. So yeah, I have this. I'd say it counts in my winter stuff, but I don't wear this like on a daily basis at all. It's kind of like a holiday thing. The one I do wear on a daily though is this jumpsuit. I freaking love this so much. This is Military Deadstock, again from La Trey Art and Style which is where I got that beanie from and this is a Canadian flight suit from like the 70s or the 80s. I was looking for one for so long and then I realized that they carry these and it's just so much better to buy a legitimate jumpsuit that was used in the army than it is to go out and buy one that's stylish and trendy and mocking it. Last thing I have to show you guys is shoes, so I'm going to go through those real quick. First one, these are the ones that I wear the most often. They are my loafers from Vagabond leather black loafers and then I have sneakers these are beige ones from Fry Company they're just super comfortable they're lighter which I love because I don't like wearing just all black shoes all the time these are my go-to boots they're from Hogel which is Swedish or something they're black they go up a bit higher they are holding on for their dear life because Canada salt wears down leather even as much as I spray them and clean them, it's just so harsh here. Um, and I'm not going to be cleaning them every single time I take them off when I go outside because I have to work. <laughs> so that's why shoes are hard, but I absolutely love these. I also have these ones, which are a um, kind of like brownish, muted brown suede, also pointed. These are from a boutique called Specchio, which closed down unfortunately, but they used to be in Yorkville, so it's local. These ones are from All Saints. They are like very chunky kind of combat boots. The reason I bought them is because they have tread at the bottom and I didn't have legitimate winter boots for when it snows and it's icy outside and I refuse to get like actual winter boots, so I got these, spray them. I like that they are a patent leather, so they aren't gonna ruin as much with the salt. I also have these, which you guys know are one of my most beloved shoes. I don't wear them as much anymore. I used to wear them every single day in the fall for about two years straight, and it completely ruined them. <laughs> There's holes everywhere. I brought them to the cobbler twice already, and they repaired the holes for me, and they repaired the little cracks because they are like a patent leather, but they're on their last legs. Like, do you see this? The holes are all opening again. I love how they look. They were from French Connection. I bought them at like a Capizio Shoes a very long time ago. And I just can't bear with throwing them out. I love them so much. So I'm going to try to wear them um, very specifically and a lot less than every day so that I can keep them in my wardrobe for a long time. I just absolutely love how they look. They were pointed slightly heeled loafer and I love them. And then the other ones are more of a spring summer but I really want light boots. I don't think I can actually wear these in the fall winter because they are mesh and they're not warm and uh, I don't think they would survive because they're vintage, they're thrifted, but I still do sometimes so whatever. I also have two other pairs. I have one over the knee black boot from Aldo and I have a pair of white winter boots that are like that look like snow boots um so i will insert photos but i want to bring them in here because they are covered in salt at the bottom that is everything of my in my fall winter wardrobe i didn't show you guys the pieces that i recently thrifted because they were things that i bought after kind of going through all this in my head for example this is a top that i recently thrifted and it's this gorgeous blue i absolutely love it um because it's a bit fancier so things that i realized that i wanted to add to my wardrobe after decluttering everything i realized that where the holes are is 
when I want to get into unique textures, unique colors. So that's why you saw me thrift this, where it's like a fancier top. I really do want to add like a bit more elevated tops here and there when I want to feel fancier. Um, so I'm not always just wearing a very bulky grandpa looking sweater. And then I also realized that I don't have a lot of pant options, but even the trousers that I'm wearing right now, I wanted to thrift a pair of really nicely fitting uh, tapered trousers. So these are black. Um, I'm going to show you guys these soon because they're from Fashionably Yours, which is this designer consignment shop in Toronto. So I have some pieces that I haven't shown you yet. But it's also why I thrifted those high-waisted leather pants because I want really unique and novel things like that to be creative in my wardrobe. Because imagine when I wear my black oversized turtleneck with my thrifted gray high-waisted denim. Um, if I swap out that pair of gray high-waisted denim from Marks for these high-waisted leather pants. It completely changes the entire outfit. So I really want to look for pieces like that where I probably wouldn't wear high-waisted leather pants every day. I would probably wear my high-waisted denim every day, but it's for when I want to feel that extra like oomph and that extra zhuzhing of an outfit. I think that's where I'm starting to look. I also really want a pair of brown trousers. I have a lot of blacks, I have a lot of blues, and I have a lot of grays. I really want to add more browns and beiges. There are days when I want to have a more warm color palette versus a cold color palette. The other two big areas where I think that I want to add some extra oomph is with coats, I wanted something that was loud. A lot of these are very like classy, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of my wool coats are. I wanted something that was crazy. So if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen that I thrifted this amazing, like, teddy coat that's white and it's like a big kind of like overcoat. So I should be showing you that soon because that was from Fashionably Yours. It kind of fills my need for something that's more of a loud, crazy coat. Um, and then I also want shoes. Most of the shoes that I showed you are black. I really want to have different textures. I think that's a really cool way to kind of add uniqueness to your outfit. Shoes bring you places and um, I love the stories attached to them. Brown boots, I really want animal print boots and I really want like a kind of like snake skinny boot, um, which are all things that I've already thrifted. Coming at you soon in this designer consignment thrift haul. I'm very excited. It's a bit weird timing wise because I'm doing this video now where I already kind of thought about this and assessed my wardrobe when I did that initial decluttering and that's why after I went thrifting two times and I kind of found all these things that I knew I wanted and it was crazy because I found everything that I like found a gap in. Stay with me. You'll be seeing that soon. Still having this perpetual search for like a white t-shirt or thinking about getting like white or cream colored boots, things like that. That's how I feel right now. I think I have a pretty robust wardrobe, honestly. I will continue to thrift for things that are novel. I will continue to thrift for things that are like this shirt or like leather high-waisted pants. Um, but I feel pretty good about everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't know how it's going to be useful. I feel like I just rambled for the last... 45 minutes, but you got to get a peek. Well, you didn't just get a peek. You got a full look at everything that I own um, from my Eileen Fisher items to my thrifted items to my purchase from retail items. So that kind of gives you an idea of what I currently have in my wardrobe, what my style is. I'm very excited to do more styling videos. Like I'm going to do a current cold weather favorite outfits for you soon, um, which I'm very excited about because I haven't done a styling video in a hot minute. So you'll see these pieces in action. And I like that I'm doing this now because it gives you this foundational knowledge base of like what I have and what I'm playing with. I also want to say that I do have a lot of clothes, especially for those of you who subscribed in that time period where I was doing capsule wardrobe and only owned like 30 items because I realized that that didn't work for me. This works for me. I like fashion. I like having style. I like being able to play with things. And I think I found something that works where I'm lucky enough that I was able to build this incredible base of like Eileen Fisher pieces, but I would call that my traditional retail. Um, and then I have all these amazing thrifted pieces that I have as well that supplement my need for being trendy and being stylish, if that makes sense. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this inspires you to take a look at what you currently have to assess what you need um, before you go shopping. I know that in the fall winter it's so enticing to want to just go out and buy things all the time because 
I don't know. I'm the most excited about the fall winter season and I get very excited about wanting to have different outfits all the time to play with. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go out and buy everything new. That's my ramble for today. Please follow me on Instagram if you haven't yet. It's at Inspiro. Um, please subscribe if you're new here. That would make me very, very happy. And I will see you in my next video. Um, if you have any styling videos you want to see, let me know in the comments down below and I will add them to my list of things to film. I also might do a jewelry version in the future, but I wear the same five jewelry pieces every single day so i don't know but i am thinking about getting like bracelets and getting some more earrings um but i don't really know yet so i could do that in a future video if you want i hope you enjoyed seeing everything in my closet thank you so much for sticking around for this one it was definitely a long one so you made it to the end <laughs> anyway i'll see you in my next video love you guys bye everyone